Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Good morning, and praise the Lord. Today is Sunday, May 5th, 2024. Great and Holy Pascha. Mary Magdalene and the other women who were present at the burial of our Savior on Friday evening returned from Golgotha to the city and prepared fragrant spices and myrrh so that they might anoint the body of Jesus. On the morrow, because of the law which forbids work on the day of the Sabbath, they rested for the whole day. But at early dawn on the Sunday that followed, almost 36 hours since the death of the life-giving Redeemer, they came to the sepulcher with the spices to anoint his body. While they were considering the difficulty of rolling away the stone from the door of the sepulcher, there was a fearful earthquake, and an angel whose countenance shone like lightning and whose garment was white as snow rolled away the stone and sat upon it. The guards that were there became as dead from fear and took to flight. The women, however, went into the sepulcher, but did not find the Lord's body. Instead, they saw two other angels in the form of youths clothed in white, who told them that the Savior was risen, and they sent forth the women who ran to proclaim to the disciples these gladsome tidings. Then Peter and John arrived, having learned from Mary Magdalene what had come to pass, and when they entered the tomb, they found only the winding sheets. Therefore they returned again to the city with joy, as heralds now of the supernatural resurrection of Christ, who in truth was seen alive by the disciples on this day on five occasions. Our Lord then was crucified, died, and was buried on Friday before the setting of the sun, which was the first of his three days in the grave, observing the mystical Sabbath, that seventh day in which it is said that the Lord rested from all his works. He passed all of Saturday in the grave, and he arose while it was yet dark, very early in the morning, on Sunday, the third day, which according to the Hebrew reckoning began after sunset on Saturday. As we celebrate today this joyous resurrection, we greet and embrace one another in Christ, thereby demonstrating our Savior's victory over death and corruption and the destruction of our ancient enmity with God and his reconciliation toward us and our inheritance of life everlasting. The feast itself is called Pascha, which is derived from the Hebrew word which means Passover. Because Christ, who suffered and arose, has made us to pass over from the curse of Adam and slavery to the devil and death unto our primal freedom and blessedness. In addition, this day of this particular week, which is the first of all the rest, is dedicated to the honor of the Lord. In honor and remembrance of the resurrection, the apostles transferred to this day the rest from labor that was formerly assigned to the Sabbath of the ancient law. All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, forgive our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Our first reading is from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the door of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone was rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were amazed. And he said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, 
for trembling and astonishment had come upon them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The second reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commandment through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his passion by many proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking of the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he charged them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but before many days you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Our third and final reading on this great and holy Pascha morning is from the Gospel according to John chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for testimony to bear witness to the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. John bore witness to him and cried, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, for he was before me. And from his fullness have we all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Heavenly King, the Comforter, Spirit of Truth, present everywhere and filling all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us. Cleanse us from every stain and save our souls, gracious Lord. Is it not for this that Jesus Christ is calling us to himself to forgive us all voluntary and involuntary sins? No other religion teaches of a God as full of love for men as does ours. It is told about blessed Jerome that as he lived in Palestine and worked in the cave of Bethlehem where our Savior was born, he had a wondrous vision on Christmas. Jesus Christ appeared to him as a child and asked him, Jerome, when everyone presents something to me, what are you going to give me? My virtues and prayers, answered St. Jerome. This is good, but what else, said Jesus. My heart, my soul, and all of myself, said St. Jerome. I accept that too, but I want something else from you as well, said the Lord. But what else should I give you, Lord, wondered the ascetic. Give me your sins. The blessed Jerome began to cry brokenheartedly. He asked through tears, Why do you need my sins, Lord? The Lord replied, I want to take them on myself. Do you hear? Give me your sins. Jesus Christ wants from us our sins. 
Let us give them to him in the holy sacrament of confession, and he will forgive us for them. Excerpt from The Forgotten Medicine by Archimandrite Seraphim Alexiev. My name is James D. Newcomb, and I'm very, very grateful that you have pressed play on today's episode of the program. We are here in your earballs every single morning. You can find us on the web at gmptl.org. gmptl.org. If you're listening to this on a smartphone, on the player you'll see a button that says subscribe or follow. Just tap on that and there will be a notification right on your screen as, as a new episode is published. There will be one every morning, 24-7, 365. And yes, I do work in rest on the Sabbath. Technology makes it possible, in case you're wondering. gmptl.org We will close this episode as we do every episode of this program with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.